Good day, Dr. Tamizi. My name is Lin Li Yong, who is responsible for the Erosion and Sediment Control Plan Department. The presentation with a self-introduction first. So my major presentation will be the ESCP, while the minor will be the earthwork, photographic creation, costing, and excavation. I will start the introduction first. Now I will explain what is erosion and sediment. Erosion is a natural geological process that must be controlled since they have negative impacts on water quality. Soil erosion is the detachment and movement of soil particles from their original location by erosive forces such as water, wind, and gravity. Next, sediment is the natural, naturally occurring material that is broken down by processes of weathering and erosion. Sediment deposited can have an influence on aquatic habitat and water quality. So, ESCP is a set of plans prepared by the engineer to indicate the specific measures to be used to control the sediment and erosion at the construction site. In this project, me and my partner, Riza, are working together to find the solutions and designs for the given construction site, which is in the district of Rodiram, Johor. In this slide, I will be presenting what are the eight principles of soil erosion and sediment that should be included, included in every erosion and sediment control plan. There are primarily eight principles of erosion and sedimentation control recommended. First, before the development phase begins, preventive measures to minimize the erosion shall be planned through the preparation of an ESCP. Existing vegetation shall be also maintained to the maximum extent possible to filter the runoff and provide erosion protection. Second, preserving topsoil and other assets. For example, all excavated topsoil shall be stockpiled, protected from erosion and later used for revegetation. Third, excess roads and site management. For instance, a wash bay is provided to remove the excess sediments from outbound vehicles at all site access points. For drainage control and runoff management, for instance, temporary drainage systems are designed. Fifth, earthwork and erosion control. Other than, other than that, sediment prevention and control. Sediment control BMPs are designed and provided at all sites. A sediment basin can be provided to trap the sediments. For furthermore, Slope stabilization, for instance, all critical areas along the streams must be marked from the ESCP2 and measures like seeding and planting should be implemented. Last, site maintenance, for example, all erosion and sediment control measures shall be contracted and maintained by the developer. Next, I will present the project layout. So, the first step I will start with the planning phase first. Is the, in the planning phase, I discuss with my partner Ruiza to propose some erosion and sediment control BMPs in our erosion ESCP. First, we separate the given construction sites into four different subzones so that the contractor will be easier when construct the measures proposed in the construction phase. This slide, which is showing the facilities. Next, we propose some facilities and also its locations such as wash bays, sediment basins, stockpile, concrete sump, temporary earth drains, and strip fence. For instance, the temporary earth drains are placed from the highest level flow to the lowest level, which is the sediment basin. So we discussed to place some sediment basin for each zone, which is at the lowest level of each subzone. Furthermore, we propose to design a stockpile to be placed at the highest level of each subzone to keep the excavated soil. Then the sediment collected at the sediment basin will then be discharged to the existing drainage and the concrete sum is also provided to slow down the flow velocity near the existing drainage in order to protect the temporary earth chain. The seal fence is also provided around the catchment area to retain the sediments on the site. Well, in this slide, this is the example of catchment area A. This diagram this shows the division of each, each zone into each different subzone, such as A1, A2, and A3 for zone A, and this is to ease the calculation later in the design phase. To the temporary of drains. Explaining the purpose of suggesting the temporary of drains in our ESCP. First, it will divert the runoff or channel the waters or sediments to the desired location. Next, it helps in reducing the potential of erosion and off-site sedimentation. Other than that, it prevents erosion by directing runoff to an erosion control device such as seal trap or sediment basin. Next, I will briefly explain the design criteria for the temporary earth trains, which are temporary earth train design, rainfall estimation, peak discharge estimation, and runoff volume. The design of the temporary drainage must withstand the peak discharge on the site. In this project, we design the temporary earth drains according to the first month, second edition. In this slide, I will be presenting the design for temporary earth drains. 
The design for the temporary twin hinge is based on the best hydraulic section of the trapezoidal shape of the channel. The trapezoidal channel is more suitable than a rectangular channel with a 90 degree wall as it has the mass scope and it can also withstand a larger capacity of water. After deciding on the shape of the channels, we move on to assume the dimensions of the temporary earth trains. First, we assume the dimensions for the temporary earth trains as stated. Afterwards, we move on to find the capacity flow, capacity flow of our proposed design of the temporary earth train by using the manning separation. We then, designed, we, we then decided to take the n equals to 0 0.08 as the surface condition of the site is assumed to be earth channels not maintained, widths and bars are cut. For A, which is the cross section area of the proposed temporary earth train, for R, which is the hydraulic radius, or S0, which is the bed channel slope, as a result, capacity flow can be calculated. In this slide, I will be presenting the methodology for finding the peak discharge of a particular sub catchment area. First, we find the time of concentration TC, which is the travel time of runoff flows from the most hydraulically river point upstream in the contributing catchment area to the point under consideration downstream. TC is the sum of the overland flow time P0 and time of travel in village TD. Next, we calculate the average rainfall intensity. First, the ARI is equal to 2 years. It's assumed as 2 years as the design is for the early construction phase only. Then we decided to use the nearest rainfall station to our site, which is Busan Tech Camp Pekananas, as the reference. So we get this peaking constant. Then we, the average rainfall intensity is calculated. Next, peak discharge can be calculated by using the rational method. It is widely used for small catchment areas. For the simple C, which is the ground load coefficient, is equal to 0 0.5 as the site is all bare soil during the early phase, while I is the average rainfall intensity and A is the flow area. Then the design peak flow is calculated, so all QD must be less than QC for all the drainage design. Lastly, the ground flow volume is calculated as well by using the formula shown here. It shows the detailed drawing of the temporary earth drain. There are several drainage in one catchment area. For example, there are three drainage, drainage in catchment area A. Sediment control. And we calculate the soil loss estimation by using the USLE. So you use to access the soil losses under different coping system and land management practices. So the A is the annual soil loss for the R is the rainfall erosivity factor, K is the soil erodibility factor, LS which is the topographic factor, so which represent the slope length and slope steepness, C which is the carbon management factor, and P is the support practice factor. The rainfall erosivity factor is a factor that relates soil loss to rainfall parameters. R factor accumulates the rainfall erosivity of individual rainstorm events and averages this value over multiple years. So in this project, the R factor can be taken from the map, which is the blue color region, circle with a red dot. So the R value is 15,000, which is near Ulutiram, Johor Bahru. So the soil erodibility factor defines the resistance of the soil to both detachment and transport. This factor represents the effect of soil properties and soil profile characteristics, such as soil texture, aggregate, stability, and shear strength, infiltration capacity, and organic and chemical contents of the soil loss. So the K factor for each design and zone is given, so we use the value to proceed with the calculation. Okay, and, and also the structure code and probability code is also given, so we can uh, identify the soil type as well. Okay, so the rate of soil erosion by water is very much affected by both slope length and slope steepness. So the slope length and slope steepness factor LS reflect the influence of slope gradient of erosion. It is the ratio of soil loss from the field slope gradient to depth from the 9% slope under otherwise statistical conditions. So we will calculate for uh, existing condition, uncontrolled during construction, and also controlled during construction, which is after BMP has been taken. The cover management and practice support factor is determined based on tables given in the MASFAR guidelines. So in the existing condition, C factor is 0 0.2 as the site is an oil palm plantation. But the P factor is at the bare soil, so it's equal to 1. So while in uncontrolled condition, the C factor is 1 as it is the newly cleared land, and P factor is also equal to 1 as it's also the bare soil. For the control condition, uh, the C factor is 0 0.05 and P factor is 0 0.5. Slide, this table shows the annual soil loss in plant per hectare per year for each condition of, the, of each zone. In the control condition, the annual soil loss is reduced for each zone after BMP has been taken. Furthermore, sediment yield is the amount of passing point of interest in a given period of time. 
Sediment yield is useful to predict the amount of sediment and for, for maintenance of sediment control BMPs. Then the sediment yield loss is estimated by using the MUSLE. For the parameters, Y is the sediment yield per storm event, B is the ground volume, QP is the pitch discharge, while others are the USLE factors. The table shows the sediment yield loss in tons for each condition of each zone. Move on to the design of the sediment basin. So a sediment basin typically consists of an impoundment, a dam, a riser pipe outlet, and an emergency spillway. So the basin is a temporary measure during construction and is to be maintained until the site area is permanently protected against erosion or a permanent detention basin or water quality control structure is constructed. The design criteria can be categorized in three parts, which are the determination type of sediment basin, sizing of basin outlet, and trapping efficiency. The type of sediment basin can be determined based on a group of soil types. For zone A and B, the soil type is sandy loam, which is in uh, soil group A, so the dry sediment basin is, is designed. For zone C and D, the soil type is loam, which is in soil group B, so the wet sediment basin is designed. At first, the highest DC of the sub-catchment area is chosen to determine the surface area and total volume of the basin. So both the required volume, required area and volume are determined. Next, the required settling zone can be calculated by W1, which is half of the total volume, and assuming the Y1 and W1. Then the average area is calculated and checked with the required area. The ratio of L1 over Y1 is calculated and it must be less than 200, while W1 L1 over W1 must be greater than 2. Next, we design the sediment storage by first identifying the required sediment storage zone, which is the V2 required, and it can be obtained by dividing the total volume V by 2. Then W2 and L2 can be also determined, while for the required set Y2, it must be at least 3, 0.3 meter. So we decided to assume 1 meter for the total A. So V2 provided is also calculated. Then we calculate the overall basin dimensions of the top base and gap as well. For sizing of the basin outlet, the spillway for this sediment basin must be designed for 10 years ARI. The proposed spillway dimension is 1.5 meter times 0.6 meter. The silt level must be set at a, at a minimum of 300 mm above the basin top water level. To simplify the calculation, the following assumptions are made, such as the assuming the riser pipe flow is orif flow through the top of the pipe only. The riser pipe head is the height between the top of the pipe and the spillway crest level and is assumed as Therefore, the total basin depth including the spillway is 2.1 meter for zone A and B, while Y total for zone C and D is 2.3 meter. The so sediment yield estimated is 5.32 tons for the design storm. With the design sediment trapping efficiency of 90%, the total sediment trap for the design event is 4.8 tons or 2.63 meter cube, which is converted from soil bulk density of uh, 1.6 k kilogram per meter cube. The sediment storage zone for the basin is 782.34 meter cube. Hence, the provided sediment basin is capable to occupy the settled sediment. This is the details drawing for dry sediment basin for zone A. This is the dry sediment basin for zone B. This is the wet sediment basin for zone C. This is the wet sediment basin for zone D. Now I will be explaining the other designs. Sediment control BMPs, the first one is for the wash bay, is the tempor temporary or permanent cleaning stations. It helps in preventing the sediments from being tracked onto the public roads. The second one is the seal fence, which helps in reducing the erosion and runoff velocity. Next, it also helps in retaining the transported sediments on the site. In this project, the steel poles with the rebar cap is used, while the fabric used is woven jaw textile filter fabric. The third one is the soil stockpile, which is formed during the cut and fill. The soil is stockpiled for later use in landscaping or restoration of the region. The last one is the concrete sump, which helps in catching the drainage and protecting the culvert with sediments to be controlled in the sump before discharge to the culvert. Control BMPs, seeding and planting are implemented to control the soil erosion. This is, this is because seeding of grasses and planting of trees, shrubs, and ground, ground covers provide long term stabilization of soil. Let's move on to the conclusion. In short, the objectives of the ESCB are achieved as it helps in reducing the runoff velocity, 
maintaining the stability of soil, controlling the sediments, and the facilities design have achieved its usefulness. Thank you, Doctor, for spending time to watch my presentation. <laughs>